To understand marketing in today's digital age, I'd like to start with a little history lesson. If we go back about 150 years ago, in US history, we entered a period of time that was known as the first technical revolution. It was this time we saw rise of factories and production lines and railroads. And for nearly 100 years in America, we concentrated our efforts on talking about the basics of products and setting up new markets and communicating. We talked about that in newspapers and in, in uh, billboards and on radio. And for nearly 100 years, we got by with this. But then as we moved into the era of the 50s and 60s and 70s with increased competition and mass production, we had to become more competitive. And we used persuasive selling. And we had more mediums like TV and telemarketing and direct mail. But it was in the 80s and the 90s that marketing really came into the science and rigor that we have as we learned that we could take an inward approach of just pushing out products to an outward approach where we could learn from people and we learned to research and develop products that people actually wanted. Now, let me move to today, which is really the second technical revolution. In early 2012, it was reported that 55% of Americans had used a mobile device to access the internet. Now, what's more, 31% of those said it was their primary device. And that means that about 17% access the internet only on mobile devices. And this was back in 2012. Now, earlier this year, it was determined that 25% of Americans actually have a laptop, a tablet, and a smartphone, all three devices. In 2013, tablets are outselling all other forms of devices, including laptops. And they're the fastest growing consumer technology ever. Now, that also means that with the increased smartphone usage and tablet usage, that we are, the mobile web is suppress, uh, surpassing the desktop web. And that's happening right now, today. So where we're at is this world in which, from the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, we are using these devices for everything, from self-expression, from discovery and research and planning, to preparing the parts of our lives and managing our life, our finances, our health. We're shopping. The complete cycle of purchase is there. And the socializing and also me time or simply being entertained. So this is the space that we market in today. And it's incredible because in the span of 150 years of everything we've learned, we have an environment where the devices that we have in our pockets that are always connected and so integral to our everything we do, they did not exist just four to five years ago. That's incredible, right? So everything we know about marketing has to change. Well, no. Also, yes. <laughs> so I've been in this digital marketing space for nearly 20 years, and I've seen the changes come in marketing and markets and consumer preferences and devices. And I thought to myself, well, really, what has been happening that has changed everything about what we know? And does anything really apply anymore? And I came to realize that if we do take some of the things that we know and reimagine, if you will, and modernize them, that we can get by and we can live in this new modern age of marketing in the digital world. I should point out that my definition of marketing is a little simpler than most. Marketing to me is really just telling people why you have what they need and listening to what they care about. Now, of course, I guess I'll add that marketing is everything that you're doing in life. And anytime you're working to persuade someone else or, or, or uh, inform someone else that uh, they're the customer. So everything here applies to whether you're a business or an organization or any type of uh, situation in life. In marketing, we learn one of the core principles is plan your markets. We segment, we target. We try to optimize and learn about the customers. But often, this is done with research that's done yearly or even less frequently. It's done by paying panels of surveys to tell us what they want. And it's more reactive about what do they think about this thing I want to sell than it is to say, what is it the people who want to buy things like I want to sell think about them and what matters to them? And so I want to change that into the first principle, which is called always be listening. 
And what this means really is to ask your customers how they feel. It means to survey more. It means to think about not just your customers, but about your products and services in the mind of your customers. And it means to combine things like marketing analytics and the call center, if you have one, and your frontline employees, and all the people who are involved in connecting with the customer and really constantly listening. Because the more you can optimize and the faster you can optimize your products and services, the better off you're going to be in this rapid environment. Promotion is about the nature of your message and the things that you want to talk about. And that's going to be different whether you're starting a business or introducing a new product or having a, just a quick sale. But today, as you've seen, the opportunities have been so changed in what you can do. And quite frequently, the promotions that we have are too infrequent or they are too similar. And we have this opportunity to be out there much like we did in the 100 years prior when we talked about practical advice and tips and information as we sold those products. So my second principle is always be talking. And if you're listening to your customer and understand what to say, you can do a lot more with the conversation in a lot more places. And you can be like the news media or the lifestyle magazine. And you can be more than product and price. You can talk about your great business uh, mission. You can talk about your great employees. You can talk about your charitable contributions. And what's important here is that consumers who are always connected are consuming everything that they can about the products that they want to purchase. So in fact, you need to be there telling them why they should buy from you at the time that they're already getting ready to purchase. So it's important to always be talking. An old principle of marketing that we learn is about activation. And activation is about your marketing mix and where do I want to engage in different places. And obviously, as you've seen, what we had for 150 years has changed. And we have a whole new suite of places to engage. And so we have to think further and faster about activation. So my third concept is about always executing purposefully. Because if you have to change the places where you execute, you need at least to understand why you're doing it. And consumer preferences change, and their habits change. And so you need to be aware that there will always be more Pinterests and Instagrams and other kinds of tools that people use. But you can also understand that you can engage in a different way because now you can engage when they're shopping or when they're socializing or when they're planning their life's activities. We have the ability now to be more part of that and we can execute purposefully regardless of place. The 1980s were a time of big business. Uh, it was a time of uh, women's suits with big shoulder pads. It was a time of big ideas. It was a time corporations thought that they needed to have very large organization structures. And with these large and with these big structures came inevitably poor siloed communication between departments. So the concept that was developed was this idea around integrated marketing communications. Let's get marketing departments and, and PR and our advertising, let's get them to work together. But here's the thing, after 30 years of doing this, we're no better than we have been when the ideas first came out. In fact, it's even worse with the pace of business change, with the need for people to you know, have more products in the marketplace, and with the pressures and demands of the business, we have all the more ability to stop focusing on the customer and focus on the day-to-day. -day. We have to change that. So my fourth principle is always be agile. If you are a small business or organization, you're already wearing many hats and you're in a good place. But if you're a big organization, you have to think completely differently about what you're doing. You have to stop spending and planning your budgets yearly. You have to pool your resources. If you fail, you have to move on to the next thing. You have to understand how to work together across not just the traditional of marketing, advertising, and PR, but include customer service and support and product development and research. And everyone needs to participate in an agile marketing place that understands and listens to the customer and creates things they want and executes appropriately. So these are my four principles for the modern marketing in the digital age. And they're broad, they go deep, and they work well together and they will work for you.